Hey, what is up, Mile Higher homies? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 114. Today, we are talking about unexplained phenomena. This is our fifth part in this series. Yeah, I'm super excited because we've got some really, really interesting stuff to share with you guys today. Yeah, we do. We found a lot of good things. And we also have our dog joining us today. We this do. is Bernie. He's <laughs> sitting on the table. He just wanted to be part of this. So he did. we let him. You know, what? Can, can't say no to this face. Exactly. But before we get into it, uh, we have a couple of news stories we want to share with. Also, just a really interesting uh, little video that was on SNL that we'll show you guys, too. That's pretty interesting. But before we get into that, I just want to say, if you guys haven't checked out my podcast, Lights Out, would love for you to check it out. If you haven't, covering some really interesting stuff on there from hauntings to, uh, like we just covered, the Elisa Lamb case and the Haunted Cecil Hotel. We're going to be covering cryptids. We're going to be covering... Uh, serial killers and all that kind of stuff. So if you're into that darker side of true crime and you love the paranormal, then definitely check out my show lights out hosted with my brother, Joel. And yeah, it's a good old time. So check that out if you haven't. Yeah, it's really good. I think a lot of you guys would like it. It's more of a structured show, less conversational, but it's really interesting. And again, it's darker topics. So if you're into that, it's darker stuff than we even cover here. So yeah. It's really interesting stuff. So I'll link all that below for you guys. But let's go ahead and just jump right into this first video, I guess is what it is. The first topic was actually an article that was recently published about a discovery that was made earlier this year. And the discovery is that scientists found a jellyfish-like parasite, which doesn't have mitochondrial genome, which means that it doesn't need oxygen in order to survive. It doesn't need it whatsoever. And this is the first time a multicellular organism has been found with this, you know, absence of this mitochondrial genome, as well as a actual organism that doesn't rely on oxygen in order to survive. That's really interesting because it shows us that there's a possibility of life on other planets where there's not oxygen, or we don't think it's up to par for living standards that this kind of just blows that all out of the water. It opens the doors mm-hmm. to like, we got to start looking for a life that doesn't need oxygen necessarily, or even maybe water. I mean, it's becoming more clear that likely extraterrestrial life will not rely on the same things that mm-hmm. we need here on earth for life here. But do these things, they're parasites. Do they have consciousness? Yeah, I don't know, but I don't know. That's a good question. Like, I don't know if you need oxygen to have consciousness or intelligence right because i mean what kind of brain could this thing possibly have or if it even has a brain in that sense of the word yeah if you're watching on youtube they almost look like they kind of look like little cartoon aliens they do aliens yeah like that classic kind of alien you know logo that people have yeah it's very bizarre that they they do look like that so these grab onto salmon they live inside of salmon throughout their entire life gross yeah, they're actually called a nadarian, and they belong to the same phylum as coral, jellyfish, and anemones. So kind of like a gooey, jelly-like organism. And yeah, it just lives inside of the salmon for its entire life. And it's not harmful to the salmon, so it's not like a harmful parasite that's like fucking the salmon up or anything. It just hangs out there? Mm-hmm, exactly. Mm. So scientists essentially like deep sequence the DNA And that's how they found out that it didn't have this mitochondrial genome, which basically then in turn means that it doesn't need oxygen in order to survive. And they don't even really know how this thing survives at all. That's still a complete mystery to them. So pretty interesting stuff that we're starting to find organisms here on earth that don't need oxygen. That's interesting for sure. But the next uh, sort of series of stories I have for you all revolve around space and UFOs. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the Space Force, because the Space Force has been sort of making its return to the media and the news because President Trump just unveiled the official flag this past Friday for the Space Force, which was like a big deal um, since he actually, you know, formed it two years ago, the Sixth Military Division of the United States Armed Forces, the Space Force. But not only did he unveil the flag, the Space Force actually unveiled their first recruiting video, which when I watched it, I was like, hmm. This is very enticing, you know? (laughs) So I just want to show you guys that because it's pretty cool. Some people look to the stars and ask, what if? Our job is to have an answer. We have to imagine what will be imagined. Plan for what's possible while it's still impossible. Maybe you weren't put here just to ask the questions. Maybe you were put here to be the answer. Maybe your purpose on this planet 
isn't on this planet. Love that last line. Yeah. Isn't on this Maybe planet, your purpose right? on this planet isn't on this planet. It's really good marketing. I mean, those military ads always make you feel like you could be part of something bigger than yourself. I mean, they do a great job. They even make me feel like I could go join the army. Seriously, though, it's almost like a movie trailer yeah. the way that they play it. And they always Especially show you like one. the coolest scenes and like, yeah. here's all the technology that you might get to play yeah, with if you join us. Doing the most important shit. Yeah. But this whole Space Force is really interesting because we're starting to learn more information about it and like what is the actual purpose for it. Mm -hmm. And obviously the main offic official purpose that they've uh, sort of told us is that they're going to be essentially monitoring satellites and military satellite communications and things like that. They actually got their first offensive weapon, which is a counter communication system, mm -hmm. which is a, a way for them to jam other satellites communications. So it seems like the way that they're pitching the space force to us is it's really going to be a sort of a protective force that is going to be in space in some way, shape or form protecting our assets mm -hmm. uh, like the satellites and things like space that station, and, and yeah. stations and things like that. But I don't know. A lot of people are like, well, maybe there's something more to it, you know, like so. we'll start fighting over territory or the moon. Yeah, exactly. This fact that Trump's like, we're going to start mining the moon mm -hmm. here soon. Yeah, yeah. It's like, why is it our right to start right. doing that? You know, another country could try to stop us. And yeah, how are they going to figure out need an army up there? Exactly. How are they going to figure out who owns what in space? Like, how do you even figure that I out? I can't even think about that. That just blows my mind. Because like, I think you had mentioned to me before, like, maybe there should be some sort of like council of like yeah, all of the world leaders for space where they specifically kind of map out, you know, who's going to get what. And, and right now it just seems like it's this giant race mm -hmm. to who can become the dominant force in space and the united states is definitely saying like we're going to be that dominant force in space i mean per usual i mean mm -hmm. our military likes to be the dominant force everywhere we go so it's interesting that you know what will happen with this are we going to be you know the rulers of outer space around That's our planet so ridiculous i just think it doesn't make any sense to not have some type of group that we all come together and deci make decisions for space that's around us our moon the atmosphere around us why is it something where we would have our own branch that just seems dangerous let's face it i mean there's so much other life that exists out right. there and what are we going to do the day that we really do you know inter start interfacing mm -hmm. with other civilizations from other star systems or other planets. Like, I think they would think we we're a joke for not being connected like that and not on the same page. Yeah. Like you're having all these different countries represent your planet yeah. separately with different agendas. I mean, that's just not going to work Ex long term, especially if we are confronted with another alien race. I mean, maybe that would force us to get something like that going. Yeah. You well, bring up a really good point, Kendall, of like what's going to bring the world together because we're mm -hmm. so divided on so many different things. And I just, I wonder like, even if we did have one organization kind of representing the world in the whole space force, you know, idea, I don't even know if that would work because we're so divided still. And mm -hmm. would it just be an excuse for us to get involved in other countries, space and other, literally space. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, would it, would we start a pot potential war on each other fighting over our own space or our own territories, you know, on the moon or, in in our orbital system i guess you could say or i don't know it's just what's going to bring our earth together in order for us to like you know really come together and f potentially fight off mm -hmm. whatever is coming for us if something is coming for us you think that the one thing that would unite us would be space right mm -hmm. like we all share space and no one owns it so well i mean technically none of us own this planet yeah. Right. That's so That's true. Great point. There's all these superficial systems that have been put in I place, know. all these walls and boundaries and, you know, mm -hmm. invisible lines have been drawn all over the planet. Yeah, and, you know, it, it didn't always, it wasn't always like this, you know, like mm -hmm. it, this is a recent mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So if we can evolve, you know, ourselves as humans beyond this, you know, idea of separating ourselves based on all these different factors and just realize we all share the same fucking DNA. We all are the same species you know, like let's join the rest of the universe where there's ab absolutely where there's absolutely intelligent life that is most likely way more united than we are as a as a species. And because I, I have a hard time thinking that some other place there's an Earth like planet where they have a similar type of 
structure yeah, and, and governments and religions and all this mm-hmm. stuff like where we're all divided and we're fighting constantly. And we're not on the same page at all. Mm-hmm. It seems like we would definitely fail in a battle against any other race as of right now. Yeah. We're so not on the same page. We don't have a united force. I'm surprised we don't have like an earth army. I'm guessing yeah. is what I'm trying to like say. Like an earth alliance or something. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe we do. We just don't it's know true. about it. It's true. Maybe there's something secretive going on that we don't know about. Definitely could be. But the other thing that happened this week was kind of interesting. A magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck in remote western Nevada early on Friday. And according to the U.S. Geological Service, they said that it happened somewhere near Area 51. Mm -hmm. And the initial quake struck about 4.7 miles deep. And then there are at least six sizable aftershocks recorded, including two with estimated magnitudes of 5.4. So on the Richter scale, that's that's a decent earthquake. 6.5, that's definitely sizable. And people pointed out on the map the location in relation to Area 51. So people are starting, you know, people are Mm going to start thinking Mm -hmm. like, Maybe there's some underground shit happening that could have triggered this earthquake. Maybe. So one theory. But the other thing that happened uh, earlier this past week was in Brazil. This is actually kind of crazy and started going uh, viral on Twitter, actually. So I think it was like Tuesday. There was thousands of people in Brazil that observed a number of like UFOs. So like light orbs that were unidentified, like floating around in the sky. And apparently one of these UFOs allegedly crashed in a nearby forest called Mage, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but yeah. it's in it's north of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And people said they were seeing all sorts of different orbs, blue, red, yellow orbs, and it got captured on a bunch of different videos. So here's the main video that's been going viral. Que isso, cara? Gente, eu estou na ilha do governador, na altura aqui de Nossa Senhora das Graças. Tem no horizonte lá uma luz que fica parada, já está parada há mais de 10 minutos ali, e no céu um montão de luzes, luzes piscam, diminui, aumenta, e ela fica se deslocando, ela como se ela viesse, como ela viesse de lá do outro lado. Meu Deus, Alex, tem um aqui embaixo. Tem um vermelho agora. Não é balão, não é balão, caramba, o balão não anda naquela velocidade, não. Não, Alex, tá vermelho, tá conseguindo ver vermelho? Caralho, mano, eu tô arrepiadaço, Aqui, velho. Aquilo ali não é Alex, balão, não. Tá aqui embaixo, Alex. Caralho, velho, alguém filma essa porra, velho. A coloração é vermelha. Não é balão, não. Ah, meu Deus do céu. Tô arrepiado, tô arrepiado. Corre agora. Caraca. Não é balão, porque balão não, 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 não balão sobe direto. Cara, isso não para de andar. Não para, não para. Parou. 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 Whoa. What the hell was that? The uh, red and the blue. Multicolored You know, orbs. I've seen something similar. A subscriber has sent me something very similar looking in Canada. Yeah. Well, I think these orbs have been seen all over the mm-hmm. world. The kind of colored. Whoa. Where they look like they're almost blooming. Yeah. Like the lights bloom and it kind of flashes and then you see the whole outline of the structure or whatever the fuck it is it and doesn't it, look like a structure like no. a ufo it almost looks like like literally a ball of light yeah yeah which is dr greer talks about that mm-hmm. as well well yeah and he talks about them being like interdimensional mm-hmm. uh whether it's an actual being or a craft but when you're you know you're bending in between space time in between dimensions that you can kind of get that effect that sort of orb effect wow so it could be something like that obviously the the Brazilian government had to like respond because this was all over. That was like yeah. a main news thing. Like tons of people Janeiro, saw it. Yeah. Tons of people saw it. And they're saying that this is just like satellites or something. Um, they're not really being too clear about it. But what's interesting is people have been saying that footage that they've captured, that they've been sharing, there's tons of footage of it, but yeah. it's being taken down oh my gosh. off of various websites and but stuff. People like pulled it and media sources picked it up. Yeah. Wow. So they had to respond. What did they say? Well, there's just saying that this is like a satellite and stuff. But what's interesting is that Mm -hmm. people believe one of them, one of those actually like crashed to the ground. And apparently in the area where it crashed, it was that forest, like I was saying. And when they went, like, if you go look at this forest area on Google Maps, what's interesting is there's like a little clearing where you can see what looks like a light source being reflected out of the forest Mm. um, on Google Maps. And I mean, Google saying that this is just like a reflection from 
uh, the satellite taking the picture. Um, but people are saying that it could be something else and that Google Maps is trying to cover it yeah, up or something. Weird. But there's also another picture of what looks like to be a metal sphere. And I don't know exactly what that is or if that's yeah. what was found over there. It's like a droid or like a robot. Yeah, very weird. But people said that they heard explosions and gunshots near the crash site of this UFO. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Of course, that can't be confirmed. Right. So people are saying that this was a legitimate UFO that crashed and Someone went the government and it. covered it up. Killed it. Well, not Ooh. necessarily killed it or saw a fight ensued or something and they like <laughs> took it somewhere. I don't know. Huh. There's still not a lot of details about exactly what's going on That's there. That's crazy. But it really went viral. So And these types of videos surface every few weeks, something. Mm -hmm. It's like this stuff is not nothing. Like something is going on. And the fact that the government can't explain it most of the time. Well, and it's like if you can explain it, if the government can't explain what it is, then why don't they just it. do it? Right. Why don't they re like show us a this demonstration? Is what the of like, look like. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm, why wouldn't mm -hmm. they be like, okay, we'll demonstrate it again tomorrow at seven o'clock. Be sure to look up. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> that way or even take a video and post it online to debunk it or something because there's people panicking, but they never do. No. Because they can't. They it, can't. It seems like a legitimate UFO sighting and potentially a UFO crash in wow. Brazil. That's so interesting. So if you're listening from Brazil, definitely yeah. let us know what you guys think about it because it'd be interesting right. to hear. Obviously, we can't understand what they're saying in the video mm -hmm. and stuff. So Yeah, what's the word in Brazil? There what might be more think? details about that. I bet there is. But the other piece of information that was released was about the Tic Tac UFO video that the Navy uh, captured a while back. And they released some new details about what this particular object is as far as the shape and some of the details surrounding how it flies. So if you don't remember what this video is, I'll, there's a short clip that we can show you of it real quick, just to refresh your memory. Hey, that is a fucking drone, bro. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. That's not an LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's a look at that thing, it's rotating. That's insane. Isn't that such a crazy video? It really is. Every time I watch it, it just blows my mind, especially hearing their reactions to it. You can tell they're like genuinely yeah. so shook. Yeah. Right. They're like, what the fuck is that thing? So some new details from the hazard report that was made about this sighting came out. And I'm not totally positive if the details around this are about that craft in that video or not. But essentially what they said was that this unknown aircraft appeared to be small in size, approximately the size of a suitcase and silver in color. So the thing that we just saw could have been the size of a suitcase. A suitcase? So what the fuck is that? That's so small. I don't believe that. I don't know. How could it be that small? And the thing about it is that these fighter pilots that are observing this craft are saying that it dropped from 80,000 feet. So think about 80,000 feet is fucking high. Yeah. I mean, that's higher than planes fly. So it dropped, it was way up at 80,000 feet, and then it dropped to 28,000 feet. So where they were probably flying in a matter of seconds. And are there more than one of them? Because they said there was a whole fleet of them in the video. Yeah, that's the thing too, is I don't they know if there's video of yeah. other, other stuff because there could have been better footage there. I, I think we for sure got a very like mm -hmm. censored version of what they captured that it's day. It's really short too. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. very short. They have more. Absolutely have more. But the interesting thing is that this object reached speeds of up to 19,000 miles per hour, Damn. which as far as we know, and any aviation expert that knows anything about this subject would say, there's nothing man-made that we have. That and can they said they were going go against fast. the wind, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and then it's rotating. How is it doing these maneuvers at that fast of speed? There's just really nothing to explain it. The only thing that people bring up as an explanation for this footage is AI powered drones that are like secret technology kept by, you know, some military mm -hmm. government of the world. But honestly, I don't believe it. I think these are legitimate UFOs that we just don't know what they are. How is it the size of a suitcase? That is blowing my mind right now. Yeah. I Maybe mean, think about like a, probably a large suitcase. Like a, Maybe yeah. it's a drone that yeah. the aliens are sending down to kind of spy on us and there's not actually something in there or mm -hmm. they're just really small aliens. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's a great point. <laughs> they're like Could poly be. pockets. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's like that Atacama body. Yeah. Atacama. Mm -hmm. Atacama. Yep. 
100 percent of it but you guys will have to definitely let us know what you think of all this ufo news because a lot of stuff is happening yeah. and i'm interested to hear how you guys are, are reacting to it mm -hmm. do you think it's real do you think it's something else let, let us, us know, know. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go ahead and transition into the unexplained starting with sort of some unexplained media. Yes, this is more of a conspiracy theory, but it's so interesting and we've never played it on the podcast. I'm shook about that. Yeah, I can't believe that actually. Yeah, it's one of my favorite TV clips. So this actually aired on SNL, Saturday Night Live, if you've never heard of it, on March, in March, 1998. There was this cartoon segment called TV Fun House and they aired a segment of it called Conspiracy Theory Rock. And we're pretty sure this shit was not supposed to air because it is pretty telling. It's kind of crazy. And it spills it the goes beans at yeah. SNL and NBC and everyone. All so. the corporations. Yeah. So yeah let's, let's play watch that. it. What's up, Mile Higher Homies? This is Janelle in editing here. And uh, unfortunately, when I first tried to upload the podcast, um, NBC blocked the entire show uh, because of this little clip here. And so we've had to cut it down quite a bit, but because we had to cut it down quite a bit, it's not making a whole lot of sense. Um, and you really don't get the full picture of the message they're sending. So I suggest that you guys go and watch the video separately. We have a link in the description box. You guys can watch the entire little music video um, and then come back here to finish the uh, podcast because I think it will make a lot more sense and you'll get a lot more out of it. So sorry about that guys, but follow that link in the description. It's a media of belief. The whole media is controlled by a few corporations thanks to deregulation by the FCC. They own networks from CBS to CNBC. They can use them to say whatever they please. But on network TV, you rarely hear anything bad about the nuclear industry. The big shots don't care. They're all sitting pretty thanks to corporate welfare. They use tax and soft money to support congressmen. Please stand by. Oh man, that was filled with tea. They went after Lord Michaels, the owner of SNL, NBC. I mean, this is the stuff NBC doesn't want you to know. They must have freaked out. How did that air? I don't know. There was some brave ass producers and writers. Yeah, they had in enough. That crew. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're like, if you see it, please stand by. You know, it's just part of the lies. Like, wow. Yeah. And it's so true. I mean, it's so true. It's such a good little video. It really puts it into perspective for you about how they all work together to control us and control the narrative. Absolutely. We could really use something like that airing right about now, huh? <laughs> Definitely. Because <laughs> God. Yeah, the fact and I love the fact that they made all the corporations like little octopus. I was like, going to say that the, with their little arms, how they can like stretch yeah, out. They and, can uh, be in everything. They influence everything and exposing crimes by some of these, you know, mm -hmm. corporations and what they've done in the past. And uh huh, saying that GE made the bullet that shot JFK. I mean, they didn't straight up say, Which you in, know, it was an inside job or anything, but, you know. And who does GE go back to in Westinghouse? JP Morgan. The Morgan family. So all of that whole skit little thing goes back to the families. I mean, they could even take a step further and be like, well, who owns all the companies? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's see the families. And Let's be see like, the families. We should like, make it a little Morgans, updated version. Rothschilds. Yeah, we need to make our own version. <laughs> Seriously. Thumbs up if you want to see and that. And now Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, his ass has got to be in that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And what's interesting is Lauren Michaels said that it was pulled because it wasn't funny. Uh -huh. That's why they pulled it. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because it was shitting on NBC. <laughs> and true. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of fact in there. That was really interesting. I wonder if somebody got fired because of that. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. And cheers to them. Brave soul. Seriously, because that was some truth telling right there. That was. But let's go ahead and move into the next bit of unexplained shit we've got for you today. So this one is very, very interesting because it's very, very real. People still see it to this day, and that is the unexplained Marfa lights. Now, the Marfa lights are mysterious glowing orbs that appear in the desert outside the West Texas town of Marfa. And they look similar to the ones that are in Brazil. There you go. They're light orbs, and they have been mystifying people for generations. And according to eyewitnesses, these Marfa lights appear to be roughly the size of basketballs and are varying described as white, blue, yellow, red, and other colors. 
And apparently it's kind of sporadic in the, how they show up and there's no real way to predict when they will appear or anything like that. And when they do appear, these lights hover, they actually merge together sometimes and then they will split into two and then they kind of twinkle, flicker and float up in the air. And oh. sometimes they've even darted around. And so these ones have been seen in different colors as well. White, blue, yellow, red, just like the ones in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A lot of similarities to that. Yeah. So, and it's been captured by people all the time. Like they actually have a trip advisor, uh, tourist attraction for these lights. No way. So people like re leave reviews and they have like an actual area where you can go and see them. Hopefully see them. And people take pictures and record footage. So we'll show you a little bit of footage of it because it is pretty cool. Look at that. Oh my God. Check it out. Wow. Probably 11 times I've been out. Really? They're there. Look. Yeah, same one that far over there. That's interesting. That was wild. Never seen one that far over there. Whoa! I had no idea it was going to be this vivid. Yeah, I know. It's like not something you have to like really look for. Oh my, I know. I was thinking I was going to be out here for hours looking for something. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, my record's not ruined. Number 12. Yeah, some people say that like, especially like people who actually live out here say. We're just amazed that when I told them that I'd seen them all live. They were real active for a few minutes there. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look how bright that thing is. Wow. Look at it right now. There's another one over there. Yeah. Oh, look, there's another one. <laughs> That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I can't believe that they still say they have no idea what that is. Like, has no one tried to figure that out? Well, they have tried to figure it out. So to put it in perspective, this is nine miles outside of town. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of up against a, a mountain range there. Yeah. And there is like a highway nearby. Uh -huh. So one of the theories about this is that it is a mirage that is happening uh -huh. because of headlights that are passing on the nearby highway. But when I look at that, I don't see headlights at all because I've, I've seen headlights kind of like they say because it's such a flat area mm -hmm. and just the, the conditions and the environment that is in that, like just the way things are laid out there, that it's kind of the perfect conditions for this mirage phenomenon to occur where it's taking headlights and sort of, I don't even understand how mirage exactly works, mm -hmm. but it creates this illusion that the lights are dancing up in the air, but I don't know. That looks pretty a, a lot more yeah. complex than just some like lights reflecting into the air. I feel like if that were the case, they would have been able to prove that by now scientifically or sh like explain that better. Yeah. If it's so much so that it's a tourist attraction. Right. Why would people still be going there if it was yeah. just a mirage? They'd they would like, have experts on the tour that understood what it is. And well, there's not really a way to prove that mm -hmm. that is a mirage either. It's just one explanation for it, I guess. But I feel like you could scientifically demonstrate that it could be that and try to explain it better than just be like, Oh, maybe that's what it is. Well, here's the thing about it too, is that this kind of debunks this whole thing. Uh, uh, this kind of debunks the idea that this is a mirage because when you actually look at the history of this area, it's pretty interesting. So Marfa, Texas is a really small town in Texas and it was founded in the 1880s as a water stop. And during World War II, it served as a training hub for flyers at the Marfa Army Airfield. Now, what's interesting, though, is that Native Americans in this area have seen these Marfa lights wow, okay. for generations. There you go. So and it's they, definitely not a mirage. And they thought it was like falling stars that they were seeing. Because you, can you imagine being you know, a Native American like 200 years ago and seeing, seeing something like, like this? Oh, I know. That would really blow your mind to be even weirder than it is today. Right, exactly. And you can't explain it with, you know, car lights, headlights. No, that doesn't no. make any sense. There were no cars back then. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, and I mean, it's been mentioned through the 1800s. Like in the 1883, uh, a rancher named Robert Ellison claimed to have seen flickering lights one evening while driving a herd of cattle uh, near Mitchell Flat. And he assumed that the lights were just like campfires from Native Americans that were living in the area. Hmm. 
But when they went, you know, the next day to go look at the area where they saw the lights, there's no campfire there. remnants there whatsoever. Wow. It doesn't look like a campfire either. No, no. And even during World War II, the people, the pilots that were flying around there saw them and they were unexplained. They had That's no idea. Cool. I've never heard were. of that. Now I want to see them. I know. Isn't it cool? So what is causing them then? Like what yeah, is causing no these lights to, to occur? And obviously there's a lot of theories around this that are out there and have to do with the paranormal. And I bet in the comments, someone will come up with something. Yeah. I'm sure somebody has a more specific yeah. idea of what's going on, especially if you live out there, if mm -hmm. you've ever seen it yourself, I'd be really interested to hear what you have to say. But some say that it's the ghost of an Apache chief, a lost day who allegedly haunts the area. Wow. So it could be something like that. They People, say that orbs can be spirits. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Could be aliens. I mean, that's always a possibility with these orbs. Like, Why would they come back to the same spot every night? Like, what's the mm -hmm. point? They yeah, entertain people? Yeah. <laughs> they put on a nightly thing. show. They get yeah. some cut of the revenue from the tourist <laughs> attraction. <laughs> this is a wild theory. Some people think that there's somebody that is tying lights to jackrabbits <laughs> and setting them loose. And they're just like, <laughs> doing, doing, like, because jackrabbits can jump fucking high, dude. They can. <laughs> But come on, that, <laughs> yeah, video. that seems ridiculous. And somebody would have saw a bunch of rabbits jumping in the air. Who is doing rabbits. that every night for yeah. the tourists? They're like, yeah. oh, got a big crowd tonight. Got to get a lot of flashlights out there on the rabbits. <laughs> well, not to mention the lights are like floating. It'd be one thing if they were like going like yeah. this, like a, a jumping motion, but they're right. like kind of just like, boom, right. Yeah. It just boom. doesn't even make sense. And then no. they merge and split right. too. Like <laughs> what the fuck is that? Maybe they're mating during that. The rabbit <laughs> yeah. midair midair just like jumping and hitting each other and their lights are like i don't know about that's that that's ridiculous people come up with anything before they want to admit that it might be something unexplained or you know paranormal i mean i think it's a really good possibility it's something paranormal unless uh -huh. my other theory though is like maybe this marfa town set set this up and it's like some hidden light somewhere like some type of advanced either drone show or like light show that they got going on in order to drive tourists to their town but if native americans have seen it right they were doing it back then that doesn't make any sense <laughs> no it doesn't so i don't know it's pretty interesting but a lot of people think it's this you know mirage that's just you know how layers of the air at diff different temperatures re refract light mm -hmm. but in order for a mirage to occur there does have to be certain conditions and you're telling me that those conditions occur every single night or in every yeah. you know consistently like that mm -hmm. so that they're always the same I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Because when you look at pictures on TripAdvisor, they do all kind of look similar. Like the lights mm -hmm. don't really change. Like they change colors and do different things, but mm -hmm. it's not like super different from, you know, time to time. But yeah, really interesting. All right. This next one is kind of sad, honestly, but it's really interesting. Yeah. And it's a totally an unsolved mystery to this day. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with the Overtune Bridge, also called the Dog Suicide Bridge. Now this bridge is in Dumbarton, Scotland, and it's this fancy 19th century bridge, and it dates back to the 1950s. And ever since it's been built, dogs have been jumping from the top of it. Now this thing crosses a 50 foot ravine. So it's not a you know short drop from the bridge. So are and, people walking their dogs just without leashes for them to, cause wouldn't you be able to pull them back up if you had a leash? Well, I think they're like kind of like jerking and like out of pulling your hair. Yeah, like pulling off. away and then just, jumping off the side of the bridge like something is possessing them to jump off what it seems like because dogs have that natural instinct to not i mean there's a reason bernie's not going to jump off this table <laughs> right, he right. understands it's too high yeah and apparently some people say that like over 100 dogs have plunged to their death oh, off no. of this bridge with no real rhyme or reason why that's terrible and even and in some cases dogs have survived the fall but have obviously suffered traumatic injuries from falling 50 feet to the ground damn and there's actually one recorded instance where a dog allegedly jumped from the bridge survived ran back up the slope to the top and then jumped off again what so that's very hell? weird like that's something weird. is triggering it to jump off the bridge whatever it is Maybe or telling it hearing to do it. something yeah yeah potentially because it's very strange that this is happening at all and it's gotten to the point where they actually have a sign before you walk on the bridge that says like if you're with your dog, mm -hmm. hold on tight to your leash. Like make sure. That's absurd. Yeah. Like I've they had to put a warning sign there. Anywhere else happening. Yeah. It's really, really bizarre. And an animal behavioralist was brought in. David Sands uh, visited the bridge in 2010. And he concluded that the dogs certainly weren't killing themselves on purpose. 
And he figured that since most of the dogs that jumped were long nosed dogs, so probably more of a hunting type of dog okay. um, that has jumped that potentially there's some type of wild animal scent that they're sensing when they're on this bridge that's causing them to just jump over. But get to that it. doesn't really explain that to me. I mean, yeah, dogs have good instincts and an excellent sense of smell, but are they going to, they know that's going to not end well for them. They're smart enough to know that it's not a good idea to jump off a 50 foot bridge. Right. And that's why I'm like, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever because no. Dogs aren't dumb. They're not going to just like jump no, off a high place just because they smell it. And like how far down can they possibly smell? It would yeah. have to be something at the bottom of it. Right. And he's saying like maybe they're seeing like some type of animal like scurrying around below. And while they're walking across the bridge, they just think I'm just going to dive off and try to get it. So wait, the bridge isn't 50 feet. No, the ravine, the ravine is. The okay, ravine okay. is 50 feet. I got gotcha. But the drop of it is pretty, pretty steep. Okay. And one of one of this guy's theories is that there's like a mink problem there, which if you don't know what a mink is, it looks like a ferret or yeah. a weasel or something. It's kind of the same species. And apparently there's a bunch of these running around that area. So maybe they're seeing that. But it doesn't explain why in other places in Scotland where there's bridges, dogs aren't jumping over the bridge or off the bridge. I mean, that would be a worldwide phenomenon if they were dumb enough to go after a small creature like a mink. Yeah. And why wouldn't there be reported deaths of dogs jumping, jumping all over things. the place? Yeah, no. It really doesn't make weird. any sense. This is really weird. And why is one of the dogs ju- running back up the thing and then jumping off again? Yeah, if you're trying to get hell? to the mink, why don't you just jump off and then you're, you know, then you're there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, if that story is true, that's right. weird. Exactly. But it does raise some suspicion about what's really happening. Mm-hmm. And people that live in this area of Scotland are superstitious folks. And some of them believe that there are paranormal factors at work here, which is driving the dogs to jump to their death. And one theory is that a grieving widow called the white lady of Overton maintains a ghostly presence at the bridge and essentially kind of either scares the dogs into jumping off or kind of like possesses them into jumping to their deaths. Cause dogs just don't do that. Like they're, they're too smart to do that. Maybe there's like a story behind it. Like a woman was walking her dog, it jumped off and she jumped off after it. And from now on, she calls to all the dogs to join her. <laughs> it, it's true. I mean, potentially it could be something like that. But what's interesting, too, is there was another traumatic event that happened in 1994. And a 32-year-old father threw his baby oh, geez. from the bridge because oh. he thought it was the Antichrist. Okay, that's really just terrible. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's being possessed or if he's just mentally ill. I well, he know. was declared insane at the yeah. mental institution. I'm the sure next day. it wasn't the bridge that set him off, mm-hmm. you know. But some people obviously say that, like, clearly there's something, you know, dark and paranormal happening with this bridge if, you know, people are drawn to do crazy things like that. And another interesting point about this, though, and this story about this guy throwing the baby off the bridge is that. Locals say that the dogs jump from the same point in which the father threw his baby from in most cases. And did the baby happen before all the dogs started jumping? No, they've happened before, but it's okay. interesting that something else happened and they all seem to be going from the same spot. But then again, I don't know how you would actually mm. track or confirm that or not, you know? I mean, my best guess would be something paranormal is calling to the dogs or luring them down there something like that it has to be something that's like messing with their brain or something because i just don't see dogs are just way too smart Mm -hmm. they're not going to do something they're not going to plunge to their death maybe in a one-off weird thing but over and over and over again this makes no sense no it doesn't so if there's anybody in scotland who's ever visited this definitely let us know what you think about it because obviously we haven't been there so maybe there is some other factor that we just don't know about that could be contributing to this sort of phenomena that's happening where dogs are jumping to their death. It's so weird. If you guys have any other guesses at what it could be, let us know. Definitely. So the next thing we wanted to talk about is an unexplained event that happened and it's called the Tunguska event. Now this event happened on June 30th, 1908 and at 7 14 AM, a giant explosion shook central Siberia, Russia and witnesses close to this event described seeing a fireball in the sky as bright and hot as another sun hit the ground or explode and millions of trees just fell to the ground and the entire ground shook. And, and, and this particular event has been investigated by a number of scientists, but it's still a mystery to this day as to what caused the explosion 
as well as what caused all these millions of trees to just seemingly fold to the ground. And it looks like the trees might have been burned. It looks like most of them don't have branches or leaves or. Right. Yeah. yeah it does. It looks like it got like fried by, mm -hmm. by whatever this explosion was. Apparently the explosion is estimated to have created the effects of a magnitude 5.0 earthquake, wow. which would cause buildings to shake windows to break and people to be knocked off their feet, even at 40 miles away. So this was a serious, mm -hmm. serious Something. explosion that happened. But there's no evidence of it being any type of asteroid or anything yeah, like well, that. Yeah, well, that's right? the thing is people think that because it's in this remote area of Siberia that the most likely explanation is that it was some type of asteroid that exploded above the Earth before it impacted. Mm -hmm. And it exploded into like a million tiny pieces. Just burned in this area? And it not necessarily burned, but like the force of the explosion, I think, and that energy like power hits the ground. <sighs> okay. But the interesting thing about this, though, is that it wasn't investigated for 19 years until oh, after really? it happened. Yeah. Like they didn't oh. actually go to well, the, the side of it for 19 years. So it's possible. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah. No, That's I know. So stupid. I mean, it's in this remote area of Siberia, so it's very hard to get to. Mm -hmm. So for scientists to get up there, apparently it took 19 years. Huh. Could it have been, this might sound really stupid, but could it have been a solar flare? I don't know if a solar flare would hit the earth. Like, I think there would be, yeah, I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, I don't not. know if it's, that's probably scientifically wrong, but that's I mean, just maybe. my first, first thought is like maybe a ray of the sun, like, zapped it yeah. mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know, know. that's what it kind of looks like it just looks like it got burned and it's weird that it's in this circle but it's not a perfect circle i mean we're not talking crop circles here it's not like geometrically perfect the no. area no not really but what's interesting is that the individual that went and investigated it was leonid kulik in 1927 and he apparently interviewed a bunch of locals there asking them what they had seen and he did not find any meteorite fragments and he didn't find a crater hell? Because a lot of people think like if an asteroid yeah. hit here, there'd be a crater, but Science. there's no crater and there was no fragments of an asteroid or meteorite exploding what the that hell? he found. But then huh. again, it's 19 years later. So it's possible mm -hmm. that got covered up underground or something like that. Yeah, that's I mean, a long time between is, when really it happened is. to when they actually investigated it. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the leading theory that NASA has even used computer modeling to simulate that it was likely a giant asteroid the size of a five-story building that broke apart 15 miles above the ground. Mm -hmm. And the explosion is what released enough energy to push, you know, push that towards the ground to flatten everything in its path. But it's interesting that it's in the circular motion. Like yeah. it's like a giant circle. Yeah, so really what odd. are the chances of the explosion creating an energy, you know, surge that would be circular in shape? And you know? it seems like, you would think that there would be like remnants outside of the circle, like little mm -hmm. patches or something mm -hmm. that have been affected. But like you were saying, Josh, I mean, it's not a perfect circle, but the fact that it is a circle, it's in one area. And if you mm -hmm. look outside around it, it looks like everything else is completely untouched. And yep. that is just so bizarre. It's very, well, it weird. has been 19 years in right. this picture or at least. Well, this is like a more recent picture. Oh, so, so it's been a long time. The trees since. have been cleared from the area that were destroyed. If we saw an aerial photo of it, when this happened, it would, I mean, be so different. Yeah, that's a good point. So this is the only picture. This yeah, there's not one. any aerial photos of it from that time period because oh, okay. it was 1927. But that's really interesting. But obviously, there's a lot of theories around this as far as what really could have caused it. If it wasn't an asteroid that blew up, what could it be? And one of the interesting theories that I immediately thought when I saw this was it does kind of remind me of a giant crop circle. Mm -hmm. And if you think about crop circles and the phenomena associated with that, we think... Right. UFOs creating there some type of anti-gravity craft as a result of its energy propulsion system it's able to flatten the crops in a certain way lay it down almost without actually destroying it and obviously with a tree it's a little bit harder because they don't really have that bend to them but is it possible that like a giant spacecraft or some type of unidentified craft attempted to land in this area because apparently it's close to this uh, lake that's there and potentially whatever the ship might have needed fresh water for whatever reason who knows that's just one yeah part of the theory i don't really necessarily think there's a connection well, it's there. so big but i mean some ufo craft have been seen to be very very large that's true so it's possible that it you know maybe a mothership landed for 
for a brief time and they landed on top of these trees and essentially flattened all of them and or maybe it was a off. ufo crash that's a good point and maybe big explosion. got recovered and so when they went there there was just no evidence of it yeah. that's one possibility didn't let people in for 19 years <laughs> yeah another theory though this is kind of wild in 1973 two scientists hypothesized that a miniature black hole somehow crashed into the earth causing an antimatter explosion what? and shot out the my other side mind around that what does that mean I don't I don't understand the physics behind how a black hole wouldn't a black hole consume every I, I, as far as yeah. what I know about black holes a black hole is going to eat everything in its mm -hmm. path. It doesn't just crash into something and then disappear. No, and there would be evidence of that. So that's it's wild that scientists theorize that at all. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they probably know better than us though, right? I don't know. These these could be <laughs> I, don't I don't know who these scientists holes. are, but they uh it was dismissed, you know, people didn't take mm. that very seriously cuz obviously I think in 1973, our understanding of black holes was probably way different oh, than yeah. it is now. Right. So potentially at the time, they were like, "Could been there, maybe well, a black hole." Yeah, yeah. And, I see you know, what you mean. Mm -hmm. It's not like we they could debunk it at the time, but uh -huh. yeah, it's been kind of debunked. And this is another theory that's a lot of people says is debunked, but it's just kind of interesting. It's been argued that Nikola Tesla caused the explosion when he tested his death ray device, which we know he was working on this, but most people say it was never completed. I mean, maybe it was Nikola Tesla, but it could have been anyone testing anything. Maybe it's just something that was tested. Right. And right. that's why we don't know what it is. And there's no explanation because they don't want us to know. It's very true. It could be some some type of top secret technology mm -hmm. that we just don't know about that caused the explosion. And he's definitely was working on that death ray for sure. I mean, yeah. maybe he did test it out in the middle of nowhere like that. It can be a good place to test something like that. So his actual Wardenclyffe Tower where the actual device was is in new york but the way that he did it was that it would shoot up into the uh, up into the atmosphere and be redirected type of thing it's like a particle beam so that would so explain like, people that are saying it looks like a giant sun coming toward like a fall, right, ball of fire a, boom mm -hmm. a beam of light coming in. so it could have been more like a a laser beam hitting the ground that but cleared the area he have been that reckless to test something like that on our planet i don't know that kind of goes against his morals I yeah. could see another, you know, part of the military testing that though. Right. And there's no, just no proof that he actually finished his death right. ray device. It, it was just a design he got, invention. Yeah, he died know. before I think any of that could really be completed as or tested. As far as we know. Yeah. I mean, exactly. all of his papers were recovered by Donald Trump's uncle. What's his name? Uh, John Trump, right? I think so. Yeah. And he works for. He worked for the uh, alien. Uh, what's it called custodial again? Custodial property something yeah something alien office that used to custodial exist custodial something mm -hmm. i don't remember but i think it's the custodial of alien property something it's <laughs> something like that so wrong but yeah they did take all his papers and it's really interesting that it ended up with someone in the trump family yeah yeah very true because my whole thing is if it was an asteroid that exploded above the earth it would seem to me that people would have found evidence of this by now yeah. like people have been researching this for a very long time so you'd think they would be digging around in this especially this cleared some area meteor, now some and rock. found something yeah and, to prove that this is wrong but they Nothing. haven't wow. so it's still this unsolved mystery to this day of what caused this explosion and this area to be destroyed hmm. so very interesting again let us know what you guys think about that one okay and our last topic for the day josh you want to Take a shot at pronouncing yeah, this one. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. We're going to be talking about the ancient site of Gobekli Tepe. Is oh, I believe bad. how you pronounce it. Not bad. And this is an ancient site that was found in southeastern Turkey. Now, what's so cool and interesting about this ancient site is that it has been dated to be 12,000 years old. Ooh, that is old. Then when you look at the timeline of civilization, you quickly realize that this is even far before the Sumerians, the Egyptians. Wow. This is like pre-civilization time period when as far as what we know about that time period from a mainstream perspective is that this was like hunter gatherers. This is mm -hmm. very simple folk. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a ton of knowledge. The barbarians. Yeah, just like almost like cavemen in a way, like a very simple life, you know, hunting animals for food and yeah you know, just kind of surviving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's always depicted in even like our cartoons and movies that came yeah. in. were just dumb, like beating each other with right. rocks. Like, duh, duh. <laughs> right. 
But this is some pretty complex shit. And they clearly had some knowledge beyond us. Yeah, clearly knew some shit because what they're uncovering at this site is truly incredible. Now, the site was actually first discovered in the 1960s, but when they you know, started looking at it, they didn't really see any sort of archaeological significance to it because they didn't they didn't dig enough to uh-huh. really find the inscriptions on these pillars and on these stones um, until they uncovered it even further. And so it kind of sat there for, you know, almost 30 years when it was sort of rediscovered in 1994. And that's at, and that was the point when they actually started looking at it more seriously and starting to figure out the age and the size as well as the construction quality of the site. And they were just completely blown away by what they found. Rather than us trying to explain what this thing looks like, we'll just mm-hmm. show you some footage of it because it is truly really incredible. Cool. And you can actually go and visit today uh, the site and actually look at it yourself. Well, but not right now. You can't travel anywhere. But <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Maybe in the future you can. But they've only uncovered about 5% of what they're saying is an actual city that's buried uh, beneath the sand here. 5%. So what we were just looking at is what looks to be a temple is what they're saying they think it is. And it's a bunch of giant stone pillars kind of in a circular, kind of like a Stonehenge type of monument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except this is way before Stonehenge. Right. But that shows you that there could definitely be some meaning to that. Yeah, absolutely. Ancient cultures had shared knowledge or passed it on to each other. Absolutely. And the fact that there's inscriptions actually on these stone pillars, I mean, a lot of animals have been seen on the inscriptions. Mm -hmm. What's also interesting about this site is when they started uncovering it, archaeologists said that it appeared that the site had been backfilled before it had been abandoned. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It looked like they had lived there for a long time. And then for whatever reason, and then for whatever reason, they left the area and they backfilled it with dirt or sand or whatever in order to kind of help try to preserve it. And that's why they said it's so preserved. Cause if you look at it, I mean, it's still like structurally pretty, pretty well intact still. So they think people abandoned this. Yes. That after 3000 years, such good tact. huh? And they're saying that there's over 20 individual sites here. And some of the largest top stones weigh 20 to 60 tons. Okay. And there's no way they were picking that shit up. No, no, they're, they're not, not barbarians. They're, they're not, not dragging anything. They're no. not pulling anything. There's no animal that can even pull no. these, these size of stones with this weight. And let's so say that doing it. Yeah. Even if they did do that, let's say, why the hell would you waste your time and energy pulling Seriously. giant ass stones? Mm-hmm. Like, why would you do that? I know it doesn't make any sense. Like well, they had so many other things they could spend their time doing. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about it is that 
they believe that this is a temple, that there is a bunch of temples here and that this was some type of spiritual site that they built and potentially even an observatory in order to observe the night sky. And so that makes you really think, okay, why are these ancient peoples, these hunter gatherers, as they say, why are they so concerned with a, the night sky and B, why are they spending the time and energy in order to construct these temples? Yeah. Why were they so spiritual? And what are they, what are they worshiping? You know, maybe there's something there that we don't know about that they're, you know, maybe potentially help them build this. I think it's really interesting that we assume that pretty much all sites like this are temples or spiritual centers, or I think it was so intertwined with their life. Like, you know, their daily lives and spirituality all were one. So all of their buildings and, and they put murals and carvings on everything Mm -hmm. for spiritual reasons, you know? So in a sense, every ancient site is spiritual in a way. Yeah. What I find most interesting about this though, is all the animal figures that they found embedded in the actual stones. Mm -hmm. And what they realize is that they're actually depicting constellations. The animals that they're, they're carving represent different constellations in the sky. That makes a lot of sense. And what they did is they ran the figures through a computer and compared it to known star positions as they would have appeared in 10,950 BCE suspecting that the depictions weren't just animals, but constellations from 13,000 years ago. So essentially they were depicting Mm -hmm. constellations and events that were happening. Like the vulture stone depicts like a comet coming towards them that happened even before they made these things. Mm -hmm. So they were reporting astrological events in the sky Mm -hmm. from even prior to 10,000 some years ago. And the fact that they even cared so much about astrology. It's so interesting. Like, Clearly that was part of their culture and people dismiss it so much. And it's so annoying when every ancient culture, you know, valued the stars and understood our relationship with our universe. And And it was very tied in with their spirituality. Mm -hmm. uh, Clearly. Yeah, it really was. So the fact in clearly there's something else at play here that really made them feel like they needed to build this, or maybe it was a way for them to channel something or, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe they had help from some type of other being i mean who really knows there's ancient aliens jump all over this oh yeah because they they believe that there was some type of extraterrestrial uh help involved with building this because Mm -hmm. what technology did they use how can we explain how it was built we We can't can't. Mm -mm. we have no idea and we have no idea who these people were and it's likely that they weren't just like this you know typical hunter gatherer type you know prehistoric human that was walking around just doesn't make any sense whatsoever Mm -mm. Especially if we couldn't figure out how we would even do it today. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing is like all these things that the pyramids, all these amazing structures, we're trying to be like, okay, what, Mm -hmm. how could we build this today? I don't even think you could build the pyramid today with the incredible technology that we have. Not as perfectly as they did. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It really makes you question this version of ancient history that we've all been taught and Mm -hmm. what museums teach you. Because when you really look at it and, and try to figure out how did they do these things? How did they build these massive massive monuments and temples with super, super heavy stone. How did they cut it? First of all, how do they cut it with precision saws? You're telling me they just some primitive ass metal saws was carving through so mathematical, so perfect. There's no way. I think it's hilarious that people still try to be like, Oh no, there's no. And they shame people that research this and suggest other theories. Like, Mm -hmm. You know, anybody that presents some alternative theory and like yeah. one of those theories was the younger Dryas impact hypothesis that is this comet came and, you know, at 12,500 years ago and kind of at the end of the ice age and people say that never happened, but now we're finding even more evidence that this did happen. They're they freaking documented. depicted it on yep. their stone pillar. And they do it on stone because they know that's what's going to last throughout the ages. They're, They're not going to write it down. Than we give mm-hmm. them credit for it. Mm-hmm. And how were they so advanced this far long ago? You know, they understood that knowing about our human history is so important and understanding where we came from. And now look at us. We have no idea what the fuck's going on. We're trying to figure it out by digging up these sites that normally get, you know, the government comes in and we don't get to see any of the important stuff anyway. Yeah. It's just sad. We've completely lost touch with our history And that's something that I wanted to mention is there's a video from spirit science. If you are interested in this whole concept and theory, and I don't know if it's true. I mean, like I said, no one knows how the universe started or 
what all these ancient cultures were using, but it's presents some really interesting ideas. And if you've never heard their alternate version of history, you should definitely check it out. We'll link it below because it kind of ties back into everything that we're talking about. Well, and it approaches the ancient cultures and history in a very spiritual, it from does. a very spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm. And it does connect a lot of dots for you as far as how did these cultures have the ability to do this? And mm -hmm. it really all comes back to consciousness and spirituality that it seems we've really lost touch with. And you know, a lot of that information has been lost because people just don't seem to care that much about it anymore. I truly believe that our human race is suffering because we are not spiritually connected to the universe as we're supposed to be. And that's personal belief, but yeah, I mean, I think I, that's why we're having so many issues. Today. I agree with that. We've lost touch with what's really important and mm -hmm. you know, the got, you know, sort of what got us here. Like yeah. how did we even make it this far as a human yeah. race? Like, and what's the point? What are we mm -hmm. supposed to be doing? I feel like we're really confused about what the point of life is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we've, we've definitely got dumber with time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we've, instead of evolving And it's so funny because most people think we're so, we're the smartest we've ever been right now. And then you look back at all these dumbasses running around with their, their sticks and their rocks <laughs> and drawing shit on yeah. walls. Like, and we think we're so much smarter than them. Yeah. It's well, that's ridiculous. how we're taught. We're taught mm -hmm. that like, humankind was super dumb at the beginning and we yeah. gradually got smarter but yep. even like the egyptians were dumb you know That's or so you know they were just like worshiping all these gods that have no meaning highly advanced educated group of people yeah. and honestly they were they were intelligent from us in different ways they were probably more intelligent and connected to the universe than we are which makes them they were like more powerful than us in yeah. a way yeah. i truly believe we are more not enlightened. at society's peak no. and if this is no. peak fuck yeah <laughs> No. I give up. Seriously. <laughs> this ain't peak. <laughs> we're not even close to peak. This can't be it. No. And, you know, luckily we're hopefully entering the age of Aquarius and we start seeing a shift in Maybe. consciousness and people start really waking up and realizing that. I think that's been going on for a while. Yeah. What, what we've been told is not necessarily the truth. And we have more and more evidence being uncovered that proves that the version of history we've gotten is just not accurate. Oh, it's so washed it's over. It's got a lot it's of holes. such bullshit. It really is. It's yeah. sad. It's such propaganda. Yeah, it really is. And it makes me mad thinking about all the time and like how much stress I went through in high school trying to memorize all these facts that like mm -hmm. probably aren't even the most interesting or important facts about the cultures that we were talking about. And it's interesting because it seems like historians give so much credit to like the Greeks and, mm -hmm. and you know, that they came up with everything and they it's invented all the of our stuff. they're the closest to us that we can recover the most information from them. Right. But yeah, yet, it's really ignorant. I feel like the Sumerians get like swept under the rug, you know, more often than not, even though they had all the advanced knowledge of the solar system and the planets and the night sky. And this is 12,000 years ago. Like mm -hmm. imagine it could go even further and further and further. I mean, we are just the very, we are a small, small section of history right? and we think we're so important. Yeah. And it's pathetic. It really is. So it, it's interesting to see, you know, once the site's completely uncovered, what else they might find. And yeah, are they going to do this? There's only like yeah. 5%. Yeah, like, they're uncovering let's it get right going. now. I know, right? <laughs> you think this would be like priority number one because yeah. this will literally rewrite human mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. once we uncover it all and really connect the dots. You'd think that'd be a priority. And you make a really good point about how it will write rewrite human history and how it should be a priority. But then again, maybe it's sp supposed to not be a priority because if we mm. do rewrite human history, then that's, you know, proves everything that we've known to be true, not true. And that's really scary. And people could really take that in a bad way. Yeah. And, and just be confused as hell and be really scared. And, um, you know, I think they kind of just want you to not question or to mm -hmm. just take what we learned for, you know, mm -hmm. what we learned as fact, I guess you could yeah, say. Just forget about all those old cultures. Like who cares? <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Well, they're going to have to throw out all the textbooks because they got to rewrite that shit because <laughs> right? that's the timeline right now for ancient history is really wrong. It's fucked up. Because clearly 12,500 years ago, there was this whoever made, you know, Gobleki Tepe is an advanced mm -hmm. species or race or whatever you want to call it, people that made this. I mean, this is not. And you had to preserve it too. It's mm -hmm. so smart. Yeah. They like saved it specifically for it to be found later on, it seems like. So very, very interesting stuff. There's a lot more to uncover with that, but we'll go ahead and leave it there today. Definitely let us know what you guys think of all of this unexplained phenomena and just mysteries, really. And if you guys have ever visited anything like that bridge or anything mm -hmm. like that and had a personal experience, I'd be so curious or visited yes. the uh, place with the 
the orbs, the light orbs. Yeah, the Marfa lights. The, yeah, the Marfa yeah. lights. Any anything like that. I'm just so curious about like people's personal experiences with it. And for future episodes, we will link a uh, we have a forum for requests for these types of topics. If there's something that you guys want to hear us talk about, yeah, absolutely. Send us all the wild unexplained phenomena that you yeah. guys know about because i love going over this stuff this too. stuff's so interesting i love these episodes the mysteries of the universe is like one of my favorite things to do mm-hmm. so we'll go ahead and wrap it up there today guys thanks again for listening to this episode of the mile higher podcast hopefully you enjoyed it if you did give us a thumbs up on youtube make sure you're subscribed on itunes and follow us on spotify but we'll see you guys next week with another true crime episode but until then keep your mind a mile higher and we'll see you, see next, you next time, time guys. <laughs> <laughs>